Hey guys, beautiful Saturday morning up here in Maine. Uh, I'm going to get the T out, we're going to load it on a trailer, take it over to the Outside Transportation Museum for the Model T Tech Day. And also, Richard from R Peaks channel will be there and with his rat rod, and he'll be doing a whole, some presentations on that stuff. So, yeah, if you hang in there, you'll be able to see some clips. Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, so I got the car fired up, it's out of the barn, it's just warmed up, um, it's running like a top. Everything's going good. Transmission still works after my fixes from yesterday. And I'm waiting for my dad to come over here with the trailer so he can load it up and take it over to the museum. Hey guys, we got my car up here in the museum next to uh, R-Peak's rat rod over here. Uh, it was having some engine troubles earlier. It was only running only three cylinders, but it was just a faulty coil, and now the thing's running a lot better. It has a lot more power and stuff, so we drove it up in here. Got positioned next to R-Peak's rat rod, and there's... Richard right over there, he's been playing some banjo. You can go check out his channel. <laughs> he does a lot of rat rod, jeeps, kitchen cabinets even. And here, this is his rat rod. And you've probably seen it before if you've been on his channel. It's got that old Cadillac motor in it, but hopefully if you hang in there, we'll have some other shots of us doing presentations. So stick around. Hey guys, we're just about to begin the presentation back here. You see we got my car over there, Richard's. Richard's back there discussing the technical stuff with the sound system. We're just about to begin. I'll be talking about my car in a little bit, and Richard will go over his rat rod, which is quite an amazing machine. This is a uh, torque ring from a 1953 Cadillac Dynaflow transmission, this part right here. Now you might say to yourself, well, they didn't put Dynaflow transmissions in the 53 Cadillac, but they did because the factory burned down where they make the automatic transmissions. And they had all these old Dynaflow transmissions laying around, which were basically pretty good boat anchors, but not much for transmission. So a certain number of Cadillacs got them installed, including this one. This is the 53 Cadillac engine. Uh, and it had the old Dynaflow transmission hooked to it. And I didn't know this, but when I took it apart, you had to dismantle the torque converter to get it off of there. And uh, when I dismantled it, 
Smith was inside it, and I said, hey, man, I make a great banjo. And it has. <laughs> I'm getting excited about it. Woohoo! <laughs> I love building a car and building a banjo all out the same parts. That just, that just gets me all, all excited. So, anyway, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about what you see before you today because this is the direct result of what can happen when things go terribly wrong in the life of a young man. I mean, after all, you know, if you'd have seen me back when I was a little kid, other than for the rust colored specks in my eyes, which might have been a dead giveaway, or the way I played in the sandbox, you know, you might not recognize that things could go possibly wrong, but they could. Having, been, having <clears throat> grown up and all, and gone off to college and learned all about Carl Young and how everybody is equally as bad as they are good and all that, I now understand it. Just because my brother was out stealing nubcaps off of cars and selling fireworks out behind the high school to buy cigarettes and I was sitting in church with mom holding her hand most of the time. That didn't necessarily mean I wouldn't go wrong. I mean, after all, he grew up to be a police officer. <laughs> I went the other way. That's the whole problem. That's where things went wrong for me. And it wasn't, you know, it was really my mom and dad's fault, although they didn't realize it. Uh, they were basically good people, you know. Every day, dad would go off to work in the factory, and mom would be in the house there watching the guy fly. Me and Clyde Williams, we'd be out in the garage in the sandbox out under the tree up here next to the garage, and we'd be playing with our little rubber cars. And I had me one of these. This was my, this was my daily driver. It was a Plymouth sedan. This is what we drove, you know, to work and to the grocery store. And this is my pickup truck. This is what I drove to go get my parts with. And this right here was my hot rod. If y'all look at that, if y'all look at this, you might see a striking resemblance. <laughs> That's part of where it all started, but it ain't all of where it all started because on top of that, quite innocently, my mom and dad took us to the drive-in movie one time when I was a little boy, and I had an impression for mine. And the movie that night was Thunder Road with Robert Mitchum. How many of y'all seen Thunder Road? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Woo, doggies, what movie that is? He's out there in this old Ford, and he's out running people, and they're chasing him, and, and he's so cool. You know, he's got these guys behind him and they're shooting at him and they're, they're blowing the windows out of the side of the car. Every time they shoot a gun in the car, he does one of these, flicks his head like he's got a mosquito problem, you know? How cool is that? And these guys are chasing him and he's going down the road and he's got one hand on the wheel, he's got one arm out the window, he's got windows getting blown out, he's flicking his head, he's got this look in his eye like, I don't care, I can take it. Doesn't bother me to shoot at me all you want, I can take it, I'm tough, I'm a road guy. Oh, I was just a little kid. I was eating it up. I was like, oh, man, when I grow up, I want to be him. <laughs> that was awesome. So, anyway, there's a point in the movie where these bad guys are chasing him here on two-lane road. He's driving along. They pull up next to him. They got guns and stuff. They want to kill him. They did. And uh, he just lights a cigarette. Takes a little puff. He goes, out the window. Cigarette lands in the seat. The guy goes, ah! Runs off the road, the car blows up, explodes, and it's all over. He done killed guys with a cigarette. <laughs> Man, that's power. I wanted to grow up and have that kind of power. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know him all that well. I just met him through this car. But I drive to work one day, and there was this old rusty looking pile of something in the yard for sale. And at first, I thought it was a tractor. But I kept looking at it. You know how you drive to work and every day? And you look at it. You look at it, and after a while, you say, I got to pull in. You pull in, you look at it. And I looked at it, and I thought, this will never be a car. This will never, this is, this is, I've seen these kind of things before. This is a pile of junk, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there. But I kept driving by, and I kept driving by. They kept sitting there, and kept sitting there. And then I guess John moved away, and it's still sitting there. And, and, and then it snowed, and it buried all the snow, and it's still sitting there. And I'm thinking, dang, that old car is sitting there in the snow, all buried like that. Somebody can come along and take it off and crush it. I mean, it might be good. There's some good metal in that car, you know? I looked at that frame, and it's got the right kind of frame. I mean, I, I don't know how many of y'all are aware of this, but nowadays a lot of people build a hot rod. First thing they do is throw away the frame, and they get some metal, and they build a new frame. This is a real frame. This is a 33 Chevy frame. It's been boxed. Been extended, got this suicide front end on it. That's what they used to call it when they put the front end out in front of the car, because the way the car bounces up and down, maybe I'll do it on the other side. When the car bounces up and down, 
These radius rods makes it look like the frame's bending. And I figure out how to get on this car so I can bounce it. I suppose I could climb right up on the motor here. Yep, that works. Can you see that? That looks dangerous, don't it? <laughs> Does it? Is anybody but me? I mean, am I the only one that can see this? <laughs> yeah, see, I like that whole danger thing. It works for me. That danger thing, that alcohol thing, that uh, people walking up to you saying, you drive that thing? <laughs> that thing run? Is that legal? Yeah. I drive it, it runs, and it's legal, believe it or not. I took it to, uh, I took it down, and uh, there was a guy down in inspection's place, and I said, get your book out, I'm going to build a car, and I want you to tell me what I can get away with. And he went off in the book, and said, okay, we got away with it. So here's what we got. Uh, this body was originally a 47 Ford fire truck. That's why it's got this written on the door. I didn't make this up. And I wouldn't have, because Chelsea's not a name that I was ever particularly fond of, but uh, uh, John told me when he bought this, it made out of an old fire truck. When I sanded the primer off the door, the old sign was still under there, so I got to stand and come over and paint that, repaint that on there. I felt like it, I felt like it deserved to be preserved, you know, it was, uh, it was cool. At one time it was a fire truck and now it's a fire truck. So I wanted to save that. And this motor surprised me. John said it would run. I didn't believe him. And uh, on Christmas morning at 3 p.m. when it was 10 below, I got it to crank for the first time. And I was like, woohoo, it runs, woohoo. <laughs> I was just loving that. I had me an old flathead I was going to put in there. But after this motor ran, I thought, now this motor was made the year I was born. And it still runs. I don't even know if it's ever been rebuilt. It's got so much blow by it. smokes like a freight train, you know. But it runs. I'm driving it. I've been driving two or three years now. Still going. I mean, I could, I could, and I am going to someday pull it all apart and, you know, do pistons and do a, I'm going to do an at-home rebuild, you know. You know, back in the old days, you used to rebuild your motor where your car broke down. Y'all remember that? Like, I remember uh, this guy came over to our house one time in his uh, Pontiac GTO. And the engine blew in the driveway, and we spent a week out there in the sand rebuilding that motor inside the frame rails, and then put it back together, and he drove it back home. Back in the days, we didn't call the wrecker to come get it, and we didn't call anybody else to fix it. We fixed it ourselves because we was poor. Being poor is a wonderful thing. Do y'all know that? Because if you're poor, it teaches you how to do stuff. I mean, if you're not poor, something breaks, you call somebody, they fix it, you ain't learned anything. But if you're poor and something breaks, you fix it yourself, then you know how to fix it next time. So, it, Thank you.